Now we'll be using the random 2D function to create a simple procedural tiling material. And we'll do that by using noise to add variations in color to an existing tiling texture. Begin by creating a new material, and I'll call this one matte underscore tiling. I'll double click to dive inside, and actually we're going to be using some textures from the starter content. So I'll go to the content browser, and then I'll use the filter to isolate the textures I'm looking for, which if I start typing concrete, I'll see the T underscore concrete underscore tiles textures. There are three ending in D, M, and N, which stand for diffuse, metallic, and normal. Then I'll drag them onto the tab of the material and drop them down, which automatically creates texture sample nodes. I've laid them out here and connect up the textures to their corresponding slot on the main material node. Then I'll set the preview mesh as a plane, and also this time under the lip menu, set the exposure to be fixed at log zero, so that we don't get any lighting adaptation in the preview window. And then by holding L in the preview window and dragging the mouse around, you can change the lighting direction to pick up on highlights to see how the material is working. Now let's do some UV manipulation. I'll create a texture coordinate node and connect it up to the texture sample nodes, which of course doesn't do anything yet. I'm going to play with the U and V tiling parameters on the texture coordinate node by multiplying by two, and you can see UV repetition as we've seen before. And 0.5, which limits the texture to only half its range. And all it's doing is multiplying the UVs, which we can do with a multiplier node if we want, and we've seen this before in a previous video. If I do this manually by creating a multiply node and a constant value of 4, we can hook it up to the texture sample nodes to repeat the texture 4 times. Again, nothing new here, but now let's see what happens to the UVs when I run them through a floor node. So I'll make a bit of room and I'll create a floor node and connect the multiplied UVs up. And now, where the UVs went from 0 to 4, with smooth transitions from 0 to 1, and 1 to 2, and so on. Now the fractional parts get floored down to whole integer numbers. Each subregion has the same value. It still goes from 0 to 4, just in whole number steps. This is hard to see because of the colours that have values above 1, and look a bit odd in the editor. It's easier to see if we then divide by 4, to bring it back from 0 to 4 down to the 0 to 1 range. So connect up 4 to that divide node, and now we can see the colours go from 0 to 1, and we can preview that on the plane mesh to see what it looks like. The reason we have gone to this trouble of multiplying UVs at this stage is not to get repetition of the original texture. The real reason is that we want to use these flawed UV regions as seeds into the random generator to generate different shades to vary the original texture. That means we still want to use the original UVs for the original texture, as that already has four tiles in width and height baked into it and we have chosen a multiplier of 4 for the random seed UVs to line up with it. So let's use the random generator function we made in the last video. And I'll go back to the content browser, into the materials folder, and find the mf underscore random2 function, and drag it up to the tab of our material editor, and drop it down to create an instance of that node, and then we'll connect it up. When we preview the result of the random function, we see that where we have a unique UV value, that is the same even across different pixels on the screen. They give the same random shade of grey for that seed value. Now, to vary the colour of the original texture, use a multiply node and simply multiply the output of the diffuse texture sample by the random value we have generated. Then plug the multiplier into the base colour slot and turn off the preview of the random node to see the main material. And you'll now see each tile has been darkened by a random amount. Since we've generated a random value between 0 and 1, some of the tiles have ended up darker than I would like. So let's try fitting that 0 to 1 range into a range that works better for just darkening the tiles just slightly. I'll create two constants, one with a value which represents the minimum 0 0.4, and another which is the maximum of 1. And I'll use a lerp node by holding L and clicking to create one, to blend between those minimum and maximum values. And I'll use the random number as the alpha to blend between the two. Now let's preview the result, and I'll bring the minimum down to show how that's controlling the darkest value that we get from the interpolated min and max. So I'll stop previewing that, and now we plug the new remapped random values into the multiply with the colour, and 
0.15 is probably too dark for the minimum. So I'll raise that. And now we see the color has been multiplied by the random values and each tile is now only slightly darkened. I'll now do the same to the metallic texture. I'll create a multiplier node and multiply the metallic texture with the random values. And we'll plug that in and we don't see much difference. We'll actually see more difference if we get the random values and plug them into the roughness slot. So each tile gets a different roughness value. I'm not going to modify the metallic values here. So I'll go back to the texture sample for the metallic texture and I'll plug it back into the material slot and I'll delete the multiply node. One small issue here is that we are using the same random values for both the variation in brightness of the tile and the variation in roughness as well. So we'll get a correlation between bright and rough tiles because they come from the same higher random values and the correlation between dark and non-rough tiles which come from the same low random value. So that means we need to generate a new set of random values to use for the roughness, which is different from the first set that we used for color. And the way we do that is to call the 2D random function again, but with a different seed. So all I need to do is to copy and paste the existing random node, and then add any value to the existing seed from the UVs, which in this case, I'll choose a 2D vector of 17 and 33 for its components. As long as the seed is sufficiently different, the result will be completely different from the previous random. And now we see that bright tiles no longer correlates with being completely rough. Now we can do the remapping of the roughness values like we did with the brightness. I'll create two constant nodes and I'll leave the minimum roughness at zero and the maximum at a value of 0.2. Actually, I'll have the minimum at 0.2 and I'll have the maximum at 0.8. Then we create the lerp node by holding L and clicking with the mouse. We'll plug in the min and max roughness values and then get the random values to blend between them by plugging them into the alpha. That goes straight into the roughness slot. And there we see our very simple procedural tiled material using random values to vary each tile. And we can hold L in the preview window and drag the mouse to see how the different roughness values are catching the highlights when we move the light around. So I'll save this material and I'll go back to our level editor and I'll apply the material to the ground geometry and see how it looks. I'll just hit F11 to go full screen. And if I navigate towards the ground, you can see how each tile picks up the sky reflection in a slightly different way and how the color variation just makes things look a little less uniform. I'm going to delete this material because we're going to be creating something a bit more interesting in the next module. Now we've come to the end of the first module. We've covered the basics of UV manipulation, so hopefully you have a solid understanding of how to use addition and multiplication to offset, rotate and scale UVs. We've also seen the beginnings of how we can use random values and tiling to achieve procedural shaders. The next module will take this even further and use all of these techniques to build a procedural texture splatting material which randomly splats textures across a surface with no repetition.